What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com, and you are in the right place when you're looking to grow your app downloads and your revenues, especially if you're an indie developer or a mobile startup and you're just trying to go from zero to one. Well, we've got, we've got a phenomenal guest today. He's been sharing a lot of great content within our community. I love him to death for all the content he's been sharing within the community as well. He's going to talk about all his journey from zero to now over 5 million downloads from starting as a paid app to now, obviously a subscription based app and all the mistakes he's made along the way. So we, and you don't have to make them. So without further ado, let's bring in John. John, welcome to the show. Hey, Steve. Thanks for having me. You know, uh, I told my kids I was going to be on YouTube today, and they were so excited. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure they think I'm a guest of Mr. Beast. So. <laughs> I'm sorry, kids. But, you know, what are their names? Me, I think this show is much more fun. What are their names, John? Uh, Cohen and Casper. Great kids. What was the first name? Cohen and Casper. Cohen and, yeah. Cohen and Casper? Co Cohen. Yeah. Cohen, Cohen and Gasper. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not Mr. Beast. That's All, right. Cool, man. All right, I am definitely in the holiday spirit right now. With, <laughs> so I want to show off John's app. You can go check it out. It is travelwiz.app and then Momingo, right? Am I saying that right? Yeah, Momingo. That's it. Great job, John. Where did this all begin for you? Well, it's a, it's a familiar journey, Steve. So I was basically trying to fix a problem. That I was having where I was waiting for, for buses in, in Edinburgh in Scotland, and you know, I was looking at like, like countdowns of when the bus would arrive, but they were never quite reliable. Yeah. So, what I wanted was something like Uber where you can actually see the, the vehicle move along the map. And so, I went ahead and built that, released it on the App Store, yeah. and that became a success. So, then I branched out into other cities in the UK and then to Europe, North America and to Australia. Wow. And I think the the real story is that I had to decide at a certain point what I wanted that business to be, right? Because other apps were kind of bubbling up around the world, kind of doing the same thing and their founders were doing different things. Some of them took outside investment and became startups. Some went directly to transit agencies and started making white label apps. But I didn't want to be a manager, right? I wanted to build things. Mm. So I decided to kind of build the business by myself. And they didn't really have a name for it at that time, but these days we call it a lifestyle business. And for me, I think for many people, that's the best kind of business. It's one where I can, you know, make my own hours. So I can take my kids to school, pick them up, spend time with them. And that's something you just can't do if you're commuting to the city every day to a nine to five job. You know, so in terms of revenue, it was, I've actually had two pivots during the last 10 years, right? So start off as a paid up front app. That was like $5. And that worked really well for a couple of years. But then the app store changed. Most apps became free within a purchase. And so I kind of transitioned to kind of ad supported. So I'd have banner ads at the bottom of the screen and that worked great for years. Really? Then the pandemic happened and suddenly, boom, 95% of my revenue disappeared overnight, just gone. No one was, no one was traveling, no one was using the app. So therefore no ad impressions. So, I spent a few months in 2020 kind of putting together the next pivot into subscriptions. So I started building new features that would be behind the paywall and released it in summer 2020. And for me, it was a, it was a real success, right? Mm -hmm. Where I was getting subscription revenue in and that was great. But the problem I had was I was quite reticent about asking for money okay so when you opened it up it would just have a small modo appear at the bottom saying do you want to go free or do you want to go pro 
I wasn't really selling the value of yeah. the pro features. Yeah. Now, I was making revenue, but looking back, it was like a 0.3% conversion rate, which is pretty terrible. <laughs> then something funny happened, right? In 2021, I started seeing tweets from the likes of Jake Moore, who was working on Fitness AI, and Zach mm-hmm. Schacht, who was working on Hashtag Expert, and they were sharing what they were doing, experiments with paywalls and onboarding and results from that. So I spent a few months reading a bit of research and I built a completely new onboarding flow to get people excited about using the app and then a full screen paywall. And boom, suddenly my revenue exploded overnight. I had gone from 0.3% all the way up to 3% conversion rate. And over the next few months, I started to iterate on that paywall, trying out different things. I tried different images, different graphics, and eventually settled on a video paywall. And that reached over 6%. And since then, it's been a case of experimental sales, discounts, and other things to try and boost up revenue even further. Yeah. See there with the graph, you've got the, the new paywall in 2021, which went up from 3%. You see it rising over the next year up to 6%. And right. then I'm starting to become more confident. I'm starting to give, show the value more and more. I'm not trying to be shy, but being, you know, be, not be aggressive either, but just be more confident in what the app provides by pro- having promotions, having sales, and you know that has really made a difference. Because I've got so many, I speak to so many indie developers, and they make fantastic apps. These are well designed, they're useful, and some of them even get featured on the App Store multiple times. But you know what, Steve? They get good downloads, but they can't move that revenue needle yeah. because they, they, they don't want to come across as too aggressive. They don't want to come across as salesy. So they hide the paywall behind a banner or even worse, the setting screen. And I felt that way myself. Yeah, I was worried that I would put people off, that people were would be annoyed by this. But you know what? If you think about what the average iPhone user has to go through each day when they're using social media or dating apps or games, right? It's, it's unskippable video ads. It's dark patterns to try and get to buy gems and coins. In that environment, right? A well-designed paywall that looks good, that provides value and utility, that's not an annoyance. That's a breath of fresh air. Yeah. I like it. I like it, John. You know, I talk about that too. And I want to push people to, I'm like, you spent, because I talked to a lot of Indies too, you spent so much time in mobile startups building a great app. And I'm going to trust, I believe in the goodness of people that you built a great app. Like you did your homework and that you're trying to bring value to the world and you're not trying to scam people. So do these things because you deserve to be paid. You deserve to earn the freedom that you want. We all do. That's right. right? We, we're trying to add value. And so what sort of switched for you? Was it just being like, F it, I'm going to make money? Or what was that switch? I mean, you saw Jake's tweet, but what was the switch in your mind that finally got you to be a little bit more aggressive? I basically wanted really to to provide for my family, right? I wanted that, I wanted independence to be able to, you know, go to the store when I wanted, to pick up the kids when I wanted, and to actually provide a really good life for my kids. That was my kind of my main my main priority. That really kind of kept me going through the, the weekends and nights of working and chipping away at new features and, and new sales every year. And you know, by the time 2022 came across, I'd reached that point. You know, I'd reached the point where I could say, you know what, I don't need the nine to five anymore. Nice. And that made a big difference to both my life and my family's life. You know, and we've really, we've just benefited from that, not just the revenue, but just from the freedom as well. Yeah, I love it. You know, John, I I like to, (laughs) I like to compare my lifestyle and it's like, 
I have friends who work the nine to five, you know, have amazing stock options at these very big companies. And I know financially they're doing really well. And they might, they're probably doing better than I am. Let's face it. Right. Like in terms of that regard, but the, the freedom that comes with what we do and being able to pick up our kids, spend time, our kids work whenever the heck we want. I think that's priceless because they may have a $3 million house, but at the same time might be miserable driving two to three hours every <laughs> single day or not being like the social politics that come with being a job. So like a part of, you know, I know Gary V talks about this, like it, success isn't just the financial aspect. It's the freedom that comes with it. And that's really, we're going to look back on our life and just be like, yeah, I got to do this versus that's being right. like, yes, I work for this big company <laughs> and you know, I got all this money from stock. Like that's not, that's not what we're going to think about. We're going to think about the time we spent with our kids. Exactly. Right. Exactly. All so right. I want to get into a few things. Sorry. I'm going to engage the audience <laughs> as we speak john what's up akinshaw is here at demo videos waiting i'm here norex is here louise good to see you my friend when will it start we starting we here what up patrick and then we got romaine here good to see you present sir people are waiting john they love it when i bring in the indie developers thank you for the nice sweater yes this is uh the birthday boy i had the birthday boy up here <laughs> And then pink, uh, let me see. So Vlad is here. What's up, Vlad? Good to see you in here. Rudy, haven't seen you in a while. And then Pablo says, Steve, I'm the biggest fan for a year now. First time watching live. John, thank you. I I, I counted <laughs> to you. You brought Rudy, you brought Pablo on live. And then cool sweater. <laughs> ready for that. So seven's very impressed. And we're gonna take a look at seven's app. But and then Henrik says, Hey, we, we want to get more indie developers onto the show. So John, thanks for coming on. Hey, sharing. Pleasure to be here. And yo, John put some effort into this. So Romain asked, what was the video in the paywall? And I'll, I'll pull it up, John. Here, this is what he's talking about. You said, hey, video paywall, finally got it going. So we're going to, John shared a bunch of stuff. But you want to walk us through this a little bit? Yes, yeah, so this is kind of like, this is kind of the main paywall. This is what most people see when I'm not running experiments, right? And it kind of evolved over time. So you see, it's a, it's a, you've seen it many times before. We've got the kind of Blinkist style uh, notifications that you'll feel you know, three days, five days, seven days. But you see at the top, we start with a, an illustration mm -hmm. and then we're kind of trying out photography to see if that has an uptick. And it did. But what I found was really, really kind of moved things forward was actually creating a video. Now you can't see it there because it's, it's a slide, but I can um, pull it up. You want yeah, me to go pull for it? Up? It's a, okay. it kind of shows the app in action before you even use it. And so far, and this may not be the case for every app, but for, for this app, it's worked really well in convincing people that this has these premium features have value and that you know, there's nothing. You can go ahead and start a free trial and try them out and see if you like them. I love it. it the, hold on one second. You know, I was talking to a client and I'm going to pull up your app. I'm trying to do two things at once. Let's see how well I do, John. <laughs> but I was talking to clients like, what about video? You think it will perform? And you know, they were thinking about something fancy of a video. And I said, look, I don't have any data on this. Maybe John, you can share this, but like, I think just showing off the app mm -hmm. in use is probably oh, yeah. the best one rather than trying to create a, like a fancy demo video with that's fancy it. graphics let's, let's and all that stuff. An hour of my time, maybe a year and a half ago, yeah. two years, you know, I've, I've nobody really changed it since. I just used a Amazing. rotator which is a small app you can get for your Mac that, animates uh, your video from your iPhone within an iPhone frame. I just, it just mm -hmm. works really well. Yeah. I love the, the animations too. I feel like, you oh. know, as I'm going through your onboarding, I feel like this is going to be a good app. It's these small little animations. It's the thing that, you know, you're kind of like showing it's animating here and there. Like it feels really nice. So this yeah. is the video here. Oh, you got some fancy graphics, John. <laughs> I used to do a bit of video editing work back in back in the day. That's really cool. See your destination before you arrive. Look at that. Love it. And then you saw that this timeline view yeah. worked the best too. That's right. I love it. This gives people confidence that they're not being tricked. They're not not being conned into something. Mm -hmm. And of course, yeah. you've you've got got to have social proof as well. So you've got the the four point seven stars. You've got the the testimonials from App Store users, which is always 
always super important. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it looks really good. And what I what I've seen this with these like the longer paywalls. You know, I was talking to another client about this too, another app, and he's an indie app developer. He shared the same thing. The video was working for him, and he had a very similar paywall to yours, John. It was a little, it was long. It was a nice blend of what I've been talking about with the long paywall and also having this timeline view along with everything mm -hmm. else. So I really like the blend of both timeline oh, Steve, with a long one. I've got a little experiment running just now. Why don't you oh, yeah? go ahead and uh, tap on that toggle? Which one? The free, the free trial. Oh, free toggle. one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now here's a little experiment I'm running just now where if you don't go for the free trial, yeah, you, you get, get a discount. discount. Yeah. How's it working? It's Early working night. actually really well. And it's, it's weird because not that many people are actually going for the 30% discount, but there has been a big rise in the number of free trials. It's almost like a almost like a reverse psychological effect where people see that, see that and think, you know what? Okay, I like this. I'll, I'll actually just go for the free trial. Actually, can maybe convince us more people to go for a free trial than not. It's weird. And have you tried it without a discount by any chance? Yeah, yeah. And the, 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 there was no real kind of difference. So I did see a bit, I haven't seen a big, big uplift in conversion rates for new starts by, by including this discount. Even okay. Though not that many people are going for the discount. I love it. Okay. And then secondly, are you seeing an increase in trial to paid? So you saw an increase in trial yeah. activations. Are you seeing yeah. an increase in trial to paid? I have, yeah. Was well, uh, say about ten percent rise. Okay, I'll take yes. that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I told a client of mine. I'll give you one tip too. <clears throat> I told I've got a few more actually, and I'll, I'll save it for after the call. But uh, I added the word free weather alerts, mm -hmm. for example, right? Because you wouldn't expect that from an app like this. But I added the word free and then free custom icons. And that's all we did, John. Everything yeah. else stayed the same, and we saw an eleven percent. And I was like, "Dude, it's only eleven percent." He's like, "That's great." And so, John, I'm gonna <laughs> pay it forward and be like, "That's great, John. Ten percent is amazing in my eye." Uh, I'm gonna right. update this people because one thing I found over the last few months, especially, is that I recently launched launched uh, live activities in the app, and that has been a big, big hit with a lot of people. People live love activities widgets and live activities on their phone oh yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah yeah so they have like mm -hmm. if you have like an iphone 15 or above mm -hmm. we've like the, the the dynamic island mm -hmm. people love it if you're taking advantage of that and show real-time information where yeah, i mean outside I, the app i love that i i actually use fantasy i play fantasy football a lot and then yeah. one of my favorite features on the yahoo fantasy app is that live because i can see the score it's usually up here uh you guys can't see it on my phone but it's usually up here that you can see the live features on the iOS 17. And that's always great to incorporate some of these new iOS 17 or new iOS features on the app yeah. too. All right. Enrique says, bring more indie developers to the show. So inspired, oh, I already said that, sorry. <laughs> Enrique says, love your videos, by the way. Thank you. And Pablo says, you miss every shot you don't take in terms of the actual conversions and showing the paywalls. All right, Apps for Parents says, are downloads organic or you buy ads? Any other channels, John? You know, everything, I'd say pretty much 100% for, for the last 10 years has been organic. It's been pure app store optimization. The only search ads, ads I use are when I'm doing maybe a bit of discovery, like I want to find new keywords. Using a broad match is, a, I find, a really good way to find uh, keywords I wouldn't normally think of myself. And I'll give you a quick example. Is this week I was doing a quick uh, a quick ad campaign in the US and I discovered a brand new keyword Don't 511 it, right oh okay you and, shared it okay all right i'm going to do that's okay i that's talked okay. over it. okay all right we got we found a new keyword okay <laughs> but the thing is is it, the point is, is that um i'm not american so i wouldn't know that term but because it comes up in the in the search results at yeah. like the search match that's a really good keyword and you know what? When I did the, some, when I put it into app figures, it had a kind of mid to high popularity, but a really low competition rate because there aren't that many apps kind of going for that keyword. Yep. So, so, okay, put it straight into the keyword list and it's already starting to rank for that keyword. That's amazing. All right, I won't share the keyword. Sometimes I'm trying to be like a little bit more, but it's more about traffic related <laughs> keywords. I'll give you one more tip. I mean, this is the, my favorite way on this note of trying to find 
keywords because you know i'm not scottish or british right and so i'm like all right or german and german's a pretty big germany's a pretty big market so one of my favorite tools to use is app follow and then mm -hmm. you can pick like look let's just pick i'm gonna pick on germany and so i won't but let's say you know bus times right and so i'll put in bus times it's my primary mm -hmm. keyword in english and then i'll I'll hit this little eye icon and that's where we can find a lot of German phrases, right? And you, it, yeah. you get to see it. And typically what I sometimes do, if I can't find any, so you're, you can see all these and then the traffic scores, like bus, mm -hmm. this thing. And then what I'll typically do is I'll pick the first one, but I'll also pick like the one that doesn't belong. So the one with the lowest ratings, but they're in the top 10. So this one, I'm like, all right, maybe this person, this app developer knows something I know. So I'll click the eye icon in there. Mm -hmm. And that's how we're really able to find these like golden keywords that you just found. But Apple search ads is perfect too. And one last tip that we discovered too, John was, you know, sometimes I'll ignore these keywords with five traffic, but they actually mm -hmm. do pretty decently. As long as they, you know, you have the, the right keywords in the metadata, they actually yeah. do pretty re well on the broad match Apple search. That's ads. right. Yeah. Yeah. So Shout out to my team, Yash. He he discovered that little trick <laughs> where he was bidding on a keyword on Broadmatch with only search traffic five, but Apple was showing a lot of impressions, a lot of good cost yeah. per install for that keyword too. Absolutely. One one tip for me is that um, yeah. I sometimes use mobile action to I basically start searching for something because mobile action is this tool where it will generate results straight from Apple's autocomplete. Right. So if you if you're an app store and you start searching for something, Apple will show you a whole list of uh, suggestions, right? Right. And my theory is that most people they start typing, they see a suggestion that fits what they're looking for, and yep. they go ahead and tap on it. Yep. So my strategy is to find those key keywords and try and grab them for myself. Yeah. You know, so I can if I can rank for lows, then you get a lot of organic download traffic from that. John, it's not like I, I'm glad you said it too, because, you know, like before I share anything, I like to have a couple of data, data points because people are always like, do you have enough data for this? Like, look, I wouldn't have shared it if I did not have enough data. If I didn't have enough data, I would have told you guys, I don't have enough data on this, but like, I, I agree with you. And then app follow does the same thing. So you can see the auto suggestions mm -hmm. right here. And I do have a couple of clients who are not ranking well for a lot of big keywords. Like they're number one, but they're getting like 30, 40 downloads a day. And one of our yeah. apps we recently launched, we're getting about 30, 40 a day. But it's because when you search for the main keyword, we do show up mm -hmm. right here. Yeah. And my hypothesis absolutely. was the same thing you just said. It was like, hey, we're, we're like number four for that keyword. And I know the downloads go to the first three positions, like, you know, 90% of the downloads go there, yeah. especially to the number one primarily. But I was like, then how are we driving downloads? And my hypothesis was it's because we're showing up in the autofill for that main keyword. Exactly. Like, yeah. I like that. And I'm running tests right now on that particular topic <laughs> as well. Cause I'm like, how do we dominate the entire list of all this? Cause I'm like, Oh, when I tap one, it's like the, Oh, the title's not fairly optimized for this particular phrase. Let me try to get to number one. And I'm just going to keep for that main keyword. I'm just going to try to dominate all the autofill suggestions. Yeah, absolutely. Starting with the, the lower competition keywords. Uh, Adrian says, Indie devs are the real heroes of the app stores. I love it. <laughs> Good job, Adrian. All right. Let's you want to go into the the ASO aspect of things? Yeah, absolutely. On the side here. And what's made a difference for you? Yeah, so this is uh, some results I'm seeing just now. Nice. For this is familiar for the New York City region. Yeah, look at that. And my strategy is pretty simple. So if I'm moving, if I'm basically launching a, an app or I'm moving into a new country or a new city, I will first of all do some manual research. You know, I'll go into mobile action or app figures, whatever, and just start typing in keywords I think it could be relevant. And then kind of compiling a list, right? The standard procedure, okay? Mm -hmm. But I'm not always look, looking for the big, high popularity keywords because they're usually dominated by the big boys at that, at that point anyway. So I like to go for kind of mid-tier keywords, something that's a little bit more niche and trying to kind of squeeze my way in there into the, into the, into the top number one ranking for those kind of keywords. Yeah. And I've noticed as a byproduct of that, if you can rank at number one for those mid-tier keywords, 
then you'll start to rise for the the, the bigger keywords as well. Yeah. You know, so that do that part, and then one thing I, I do use a lot is localizations. Now the app itself is localized into twelve different languages, so it's very much an international app. But for each region, whether it's the US or Canada, I'll typically make sure I use as many localization, localizations that are indexed by Apple as possible. So, mm -hmm. for example, it's uh, for the US, it's, it doesn't just index the US listing, it also indexes uh, the Spanish Mexico listing, plus there's a few others as well that have some amount of juice for the US App Store. And the same with Canada, you can use uh, English as well as Canadian French. So usually what I would do is the main US listing or the main Canada listing will, will have a kind of generic keywords that can be joined with keywords in the keyword list. Mm -hmm. And for the alternate look, uh, look, uh, localization, I'll start using kind of short keywords, like maybe agency names like CTA, MTA, you know, mm. Muni, BART, to try and juice up the keywords that way. So if you're doing ASO, always make sure you're, you're, you're targeting as many localizations as possible. I like it. Here's the US one as well. And I give you an mm -hmm. example of what, you know, this is not very well optimized, but that's why I'm sharing it. <laughs> like I'm trying, we're trying to be more secretive, John. Like I, I'm yeah. like trying to figure out like what is the right blend of sharing. Like I want to share 95% really good content, and then the last 5% I'll hold on to a few select people. But anyways, yeah, this is you want to have different titles and subtitles. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're doing too? Like different that's titles, right, subtitles. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. I love it. And then, do you particularly aim for a certain level of keyword traffic when you say mid competition? What do you Give me more details. Is it like 30? Well, we see those yellow, those yellow bars there. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones I typically go for in terms of keyword uh, targeting. And then I find that organically, you start to rank for the green keywords as well. Yeah. So you, like you're basically it. slipping into the cracks. You know, you're filling the gaps that the, 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 the bigger competition doesn't bother with. You know, so you give, you move in slowly. You can take up more and more space, and before you know it, you're you're in the top five for the, for the big important yeah. keywords that yeah. drive a lot of traffic. And of course, I'm, all all this kind of mixes together, so you get a lot of different. You, you get lots of traffic from mid tier keywords, some traffic from popular keywords, and it all mixes together to make a nice soup of downloads. Yeah, I agree. I've seen certain things the same way, and certain clients will change. Right, like certain keywords will move faster for certain clients, but it's that's the same exact strategy that we're using, and we've seen really good results. Just starting with the main keyword and starting in the niche of that keyword, the long phrases of that particular yeah. keyword, and I guess the example would be like NYC. And if you wanted to go NYC Subway, you try to find anything like under here. Uh, maybe that's not the great app. MTA. That's perfect. Okay, yeah. MTA is perfect, super high. But then just start off with like this stuff, and you have done fair, very well with these keywords, and then you can see your MTA, the main keyword, going up as well. Yeah. And I've got a little bit of a secret sauce here, Steve. Right? Oh, you're so, gonna share it, John? Okay. Uh, if you want me to, yeah. It's I'll up to you, to. bro. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to. Well, <laughs> a lot of people can can use this strategy because it's worked really well for me. And that is, if you if you can. Why don't you bring up your iPhone again? Because I want you to do a quick search in the App Store. All right. And I want you to search for Transit, which is a highly popular, highly competitive keyword in the US. All right, John. <laughs> Testing out AI, okay? You saw a <laughs> <laughs> crazy photo of me. All right. Okay. Okay, let's scroll down a little bit past the, the, the big boys. Now, see the number three there? Just scroll back up again. Mm -hmm. Number three, NYC Transit. Mm -hmm. That's my app. Just scroll up one more. No, the next, next one up. There you go. That one there. Right. Number three for transit, a gold keyword. And here's this is yours too? Is that what you're saying? What's yeah, this, this is my one. So you got yeah. three and four. No, no, that's got three. Four oh, you got three. This one. one. This one's yours. Yeah. yeah. So here's how, here's how it works, right? These are not cookie cookie cutter apps. I don't just copy and paste an app and then slap a new app icon on it. These share about 80% of the code with Momego, mm -hmm. but 
they have specific uh, journey planners and screens and views that are specific to that metro system because the London Underground is very different to the New York subway. They work in completely different ways. They, they, for to travel on them, you need different types of information to bubble up. And this is, gives me a competitive advantage over the likes of Google Maps, who just kind of treat every city the same, every subway system the same, where I'm showing specific information for the people of New York that I should help same navigate their subway system. Awesome. And also from an ASO perspective, this is great because you can really nail down lots of high popularity keywords that are just specific to that one city. And this is a strategy you can use in many different categories. So for example, if you were building a fitness tracker, if you just build a generic fitness tracker, you'd be having to, you'd have to fit the competition head on. But they say you created uh, several apps, one for functional training, one for powerlifting, one for calisthenics. You could actually dominate those subgenres really, really easily. Yeah, I love it. And I love the approach you have. You have one big app that covers everything, everywhere, right? Like yeah. all the trains, Momingo. And then you got these other ones that if you just want New York, I'm going to build an app to help New Yorkers. Help them Absolutely. Out. All right. You don't like my New York accent? All right. <laughs> Loop says, congrats, John. 6% conversion is amazing. How many downloads are you getting per month? Share what you want per to month. share, John. Uh, every day is about 1,500. So over a month, it's like 45,000. Wow. Congrats, bro. No, you think so share much. what you want to share. These are in the comments, all right? Can you share <laughs> anything about the revenues you're making? Uh, well, put it this way, it's good, you know? Uh, it's not That's like good. a private island good, but it provides for the family. You know, we, we managed to get a really a, a really nice house last year, you know, because of the revenue that the apps bring in. So, you know, really happy, really. But, you know, there's always scope for growth. I love it. And then Eric's finally here live. Hola, Pablo from Argentina. And then let's see some interesting other things. Let me see. All right. The other thing I wanted to touch on, John, it's in your, I like go to the comments too. Mm -hmm. ASA discovery. Is that just what you talked about? Like picking, yeah. talk to me about this actually. Yeah, so it's, it's really simple. And probably there's other people out there who do much more sophisticated stuff with uh, search ads than I do. But I don't use search ads to get, get downloads. I use them to discover keywords, discover kind of search terms that I wouldn't think of or um, Maybe it's a, in a country like Germany that I'm just not familiar with, you know? So essentially what I'll do is I will start a seven day campaign in a particular country. I'll use broad match. So Apple itself will decide which keywords that I should be shown for, the app should be shown for. And over time, I'll spend maybe a hundred dollars a day. So over the course of the course of the campaign, you spend maybe $700, but in the end, you have a whole list of search results that Apple shows that you've, you've, you've reached impressions for. And it'll show you the number of impressions you got and most importantly, the conversion rate. Because there's no point trying to target a keyword if it's not sticky. If, if people see, see your app, just go right past it, forget about it. But you do always find a few gems. You know, you'll find like two or three keyword combinations you didn't think of before. And you can just plug them straight into your title, your subtitle, another localization that's linked to the main localization and start ranking for that keyword combination and start getting some more downloads that way. I love it. The broad match, do you start with one? I'm going to talk about the structure of this campaign. What kind of keywords do you start off with? And do you have, okay, I'll start with that. What kind of keywords do you start off with? I don't have any keywords. What I oh, do you have, have no is keywords. negative broad keywords. Match. So it's, it's like broad it's and search broad match. match but with negative keywords. So okay. I could have, add kind of common names, like maybe competitor names, kind of maybe like the like Google Maps kind of thing, kind of like just the kind of general keywords I've already, I'm already either ranking for, or I've already kind of put in to app figures to see. So these would be all numbers. negative. Yeah, John? Yeah, absolutely. As an example. Okay, yeah. got it. I'll I would like just it. put them into, neg into the list the, for negative keywords. So I would only see I would only get impressions for brand new keywords. Got it. 
And so those are the negatives. You have no keywords and you have search match turned on. That's right. Okay. Got it. I love it. So there you go, guys. If you want to set it up. Thank you, John, for sharing that. The let's go into the next one right here. Screenshots. Yeah, so this is a, yeah, absolutely. I'm a big fan of screenshots. I change my I do experiments probably six times a year. And boy, I will say, right, that every time I try to be more of a designer, I get less impressions. You know? <laughs> It's, it's crazy, right? I try. Oh, you look I'm amazing, gonna, John. I mean, when I, I know, compared the two, I, really I wouldn't have guessed. I really enjoy this when I use this, and it's never quite the same. So yeah. what I found that works for me, and it might work for many people out there, is you see the with the the winning set of screenshots there. First of all, with the first uh, first panel, I'm including the watch app. Now I did an experiment where was, the only difference was the watch app in one set was gone, and in one set it was present. Mm -hmm. uh, so a 7% uplift in conversions and downloads just by including the watch app. Now, I'm not sure why. I'm guessing it's because having a showing a watch app as part of your whole your whole design kind of shows that the app is a premium app, that someone's worked hard on it, you know? The second panel, this is definitely the most important one, right? This is social proof. I think this is essential for any set of app screenshots where you show you know, five stars you show a snippet of a positive review from a from a user and it doesn't matter how big or small your app is someone somewhere has said has said something nice about your app just grab that piece of text make it nice and big big text mm -hmm. on your screenshot that everyone see it don't be shy because that makes a big difference i saw a big 20 percent uplift just by having that social proof wow and that was the only difference huh yeah that's amazing momigo i'm gonna look it up more than you know i'll pull it, call out a few things and this is exactly what's live in the app store and john you only put the first three because obviously the first three yeah are the most important but and i gotta tell my team this i'm literally gonna be sending this to the team after this <laughs> big and bold text little yeah. text like you literally have no more than five words on any yep. given screenshot right here. Yeah, I'll pull it up for you guys if you want to see the live screenshots for John. It's perfect. Like it's it's so big yeah. and bold in your face. Being subtle just doesn't work. You know, you've got to make those headlines really big, get in <laughs> people's faces, make them notice it. I love it. This is so fun, John. We'll have to have you back. I, I think <laughs> what I have to do is like just have a few indie devs that I love and then just keep ha talking to uh, a big room table. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Where do you take the bus localization data from parents for map says, do you mean like the actual have timetable data and stuff? Like, I think it's, yeah, the live case. stuff that you have yeah. within your app. Yeah. So it's a, I've got a huge, I've kind of built this, my own custom backend system, right? Which mm. basically downloads hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of gigabytes of timetable data from agencies all across the world every six hours yeah. and then crunches it up into a nice big database and then sends it off to all the different servers uh, that gives you kind of scheduled times but what you want is live times and kind of vehicle locations right and these come in loads of different formats you know so i've got like a i would have like a different kind of uh, bit of code a whole big piece of code for each different format and basically just downloads the the vehicle locations or live times every like 10, 20, 30 seconds. I kind of, kind of, turn, kind of, kind of massages them into a nice, neat format that then gets sprayed out amongst all the different servers. So yeah, it's a lot of, there's a lot of automation, but here's the thing, guys, right? I started off 10 years ago with like one small virtual server in DigitalOcean. And I'm not really a backing uh, systems engineer. I don't really have much experience in that regard, but I just kind of built it up over time, bit by bit, adding pieces of automation where I found I was just I was spending too much time on doing the same thing over and over again. And now I've got a system where basically I can just go on vacation for two weeks and just forget about it. It just works. It just keeps running and running and running day after day. All right, John. I'm gonna. There's a bunch of questions. How are you on time? 
I have okay. plenty, of, plenty of time. Don't worry. Okay. Go for All it. right, good. We'll go along then. All right, guys, because there's so much interaction in the comments, but I also want to, John spent a lot of, well, you tell me, John, but I think he spent some good time putting all this together just for us. So I want to make sure we go through all these slides, but I'll go to the next one. So you talked about, we talked about the paywall. We talked about yeah. the screenshots. Talk to me. I'm assuming this is the onboarding. So talk this to me about onboarding, this onboarding yeah. experience. And this is a, this is the experiment I'm running just now. So here's the thing, right? I've always had a very short onboarding sequence because so many people download the apps in the in the early morning, right? They're getting mm -hmm. ready for work or at a bus stop or a train station. They don't have time for a big, long onboarding sequence. That's always been my theory, right? I want them to get into the app as soon as possible, get the information and get out. Okay. So after spending so much time looking at you know, your, your videos, other people's videos about onboarding and how longer onboarding sequences always seem to convert better. I thought I'd experiment with it. So John, I created a new onboarding game? sequence. So, should we play so a game? Because I know that I know the answer. But in the comments, <laughs> maybe John and I will do something for you. If you let me know if you thought the top, so put A if you thought this one won, or B if you thought this one won. All right, John. Don't reveal the answer, but go ahead. Walk me through okay. this. So this time I wanted to try something different with onboarding. I wanted to add more personalization to it. So not just the you know, notifications, but also, hey, you know, we got your location. Why not pick some of your favorite bus lines and we'll add them to your favorites automatically. And then get, or have tried this new feature called Smart Favorites, which kind of uses a bit of machine learning to work out as you move across your city, it kind of tracks you within the, within the device to work out which stations you use, which lines you use and try and make the whole process as intuitive as possible. So eventually that will just know your your commute and then just give you all the information you need without even having to ask for it. So yeah, let's go for it. Okay, we've got a lot of answers. Okay, John, look, we got Henrique who said B, but then he changed his answer to A. We got <laughs> Luis who said a, B, apps for parents A. So we got a few mostly bees in here i want to point out a couple of things too that i really like about this onboarding one we do know there's some pretty big droppage on this type of screen asking for the registration for those who are just mm -hmm. listening but you have a skip right that's right you have all this other stuff will help us find you keep us on track and then you have smart alerts where you're asking for a lot of access to a phone's app like location fitness and you also allow them to skip too rather than yeah. forcing them so you make it very well known all right you guys are ready for the answer Romaine said A. All right, it is B, 35%. <laughs> so, yeah, so I was wrong, right? It looks like a kind of medium length onboarding when you're showing value, when you're, when you're kind of showing personalization, that does work. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I really love this. I think this this thing makes a difference. I personally did the same thing with my app, and I told my team, my developer, hey, just have this for all our apps. And I'm gonna test it later on, but like that way we can build f apps fast. So when we find a new keyword, like you you did, John, and we're like, okay, let's build this. I live in the niche, I believe in that too. And then let's build this app. But the onboarding should be the same across all our apps because I saw other apps doing this where it becomes repeatable. Mm -hmm. Now you can just be like, done. Here's the code base. It's already done. Now we just need to change the the main interface and so forth. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So this is kind of getting into customer service now yeah. now for so many years i've had emails come in and it's sometimes multiple emails a day about the same thing right it's like, you yeah. know, how to how to find my bus how to you know how to find out when it's going to arrive where how to see the, the the bus moving so eventually i just uh, started creating videos that would uh, show people how to use different aspects of the app mm and also include a, an FAQ for kind of common questions. And right down at the bottom, there's a button that then brings up the feedback form. Oh. And doing it, doing it this way, I've managed to reduce my kind of customer service emails from maybe 30, 40 a day, down to maybe two or three. And, then, wow. and now they're just like unique questions that haven't been asked before, which makes a big difference. And with the second screenshot, this is something I just came across a few months ago where with a, an iPhone, you can kind of assign a kind of quick actions to your app icon. And my theory is most people who would long press your app icon are doing it to, so they can delete it. Right. <laughs> so 
They don't, they're not happy. The bus was late. They're angry at me. Fine. <laughs> so I put a quick, quick action in there that says, hey, is something wrong? Before we delete, just, you know, send us some feedback. Maybe we can help. I love it. And, I love the messaging here too. Oh, thanks so much. That's perfect. And I will say, and it's hard to get kind of concrete data because it's all through Apple's uh, App Store Connect system, which doesn't really give you a lot of granular detail. But I have seen a reduction in deletions. Oh, since wow. We added this feature. Oh, well. <laughs> Love it, John. Okay. All right. So this is getting into pricing experiments now. So over okay, the last few years, when I've been creating subscription prices, I would basically just use a gut feeling, right? <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't like, have any hard data to suggest why I should choose this particular price point. I would just yeah. like look around the, the app store ecosystem and just give, mm, I'll choose that one. But you know what? That just doesn't work. You're, what When I first started subscriptions, they were priced at $9 a year, okay? And over time, I've come to realize that's not providing any value. When people see like something like $8.99 per year, they just think that app isn't worth very much. And I found that if you can price your subscriptions at at least $20 a year, then people will actually perceive your apps having more value. Mm. So since 2021, that was a set at $20 per year, basically across the entire entire world and that was great but then in september i said that i should do some real proper experimentation actually using real hard data so i created a new subscription group and created some new prices and i raised the price from 20 dollars to 30 dollars a month sorry a year okay and i used revenue cat to actually do a bit of a b testing where half of new users so the old price and half of new users saw the new price and the results were astounding. So with the, 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 the new cohort who saw the $30 price, not only was obviously their, the revenue generated higher, but actually the, the conversion rate from trial to paid increased as well. Wow. Because more people were seeing value in the subscription by it being just thirty dollars instead of twenty, oh. and I can replicate this across different kind of tier one countries like the UK, Canada, Australia. I basically just kind of moved the price down more and more until I find the right kind of the sweet spot between revenue and conversion rates from trial to paid, and this took me a, a most would be four or five hours in total to run these experiments. Basically a day's work. And the result is almost like a 50% pay raise. You know, how, can you, how many people can say that one day's work equals 50% more revenue. And therein lies the freedom too. John, the, when you, did you see an increase in trial activations as well with the higher price point? Uh, trial activations? No, it's about the same actually. It's about okay. the same, but the, the, the conversion from trial to paid increased. Wow, that's crazy. That is crazy. So you yeah. not only did you convert more is, users, you made more money with each down, conversion. You know, so yeah. it kind of stayed the same. The actual kind of the convert the kind of initial conversion from download to trial. All right. You want to quickly go through these things? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a uh, coming back to customer service, right? The thing that the kind of main complaint I used to get was from people who were visiting say New York for a week and they would download the app, use it, subscribe, yeah. forget about it. And then suddenly weeks later I come back and complain, oh I, I was only I was only on I was just there on vacation. You know, can I have, can I get a refund? Now the, I took this idea from you Steve, you guys gave me this idea of creating a visitor pass. So now when the app detects you're in New York or London it will actually give you an extra step in the onboarding process. Mm. It will ask you if you're a, vi a resident or a visitor. And if you're a visitor, you don't see the normal paywall with subscriptions. You see a different paywall that we just says, just says one 
non-renewable in-app purchase for five dollars gives you two weeks access to the premium that. features of the app i don't and think i came up with this idea john but i love this idea okay <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate the credit i don't know where i said it then because but i love this idea but yeah and you know since since i put it in then the number of complaints is just boom almost going to zero brilliant you know so that's a that's a big win both for the customer and for me so yeah next one is seasonal sales this is uh this is something mm, i've really got I into over the last year mm. and it's something i always used to forget about i would always forget about black friday about you know christmas and i think oh yeah i need to get a sale in it would be too late and it didn't really have an effect so this year I've, I've, I've tried to be more disciplined and actually had a proper kind of black friday sale that what i did here though kind of different i didn't target new users i targeted existing free users of which there are millions right people who've used that for years and see banner ads at the bottom but don't they haven't subscribed okay mm -hmm. usually because they don't know about the premium features you use it for that long that these kind of new okay. features that appear in the onboarding and payroll just kind of pass them by so this was an opportunity to kind of present hey look we now have live activities we've got widgets would you like that listen how about this 85 percent off so it was priced at five dollars a year what? yeah that's okay because my theory is so many users have used that for so long that it would take a lot to get them to move from free to paid. So to my mind, $5 a year is so much better than $0 per year. <laughs> yeah. John, are you doing it renews at like 30 or are you just doing $5 a year no, forever? For lighting of the sub, it's $5 a year. I love it. Have you and tested kind of, doing a test between like $5 forever a year or $5 renewing at 30 have you tested that? No, I that haven't yet. That's, okay. that's one of my experiments for 2024. Cool. But You'll also, let's give a uh, moving from that. I also have a, a little trick. Okay. One of the subs I have is called Secret, Secret Discount. You want me to okay. show it off or what? Uh, you'd have to like go into the app store. I know where to go. To yeah. Find it, yeah. I mean, I love this yeah. strategy. I wanted you to keep certain things secret, but uh, I love this strategy <laughs> too. Uh, I will, I'll show it off. I don't mind sharing it's cool. Yeah, but it's like uh people can't see it normally it's not it's not part of the paywall right but if someone's about to unsubscribe you have to go into the app store and uh kind of go into settings and then look at you do tap tap on your app and then they might see the secret discount plan and i think wait a minute okay, i can it? just instead of unsubscribe i can just move to this this really cheap plan yeah. and it's just pure psychology, isn't it? It's just, instead of someone becoming an ex-customer, you're, you're kind of letting them in on a secret and they, they feel feel really great afterwards. I think they've, they've kind of got one over, you know? It just, it just makes uh, makes the process so much smoother. Yeah. So here it is. So I obviously, I activated a trial mm -hmm. and then I go to possibly cancel it. So I can hit cancel right here or I can do the secret discount. You see this. That's I like it. the naming of it. I think that's what makes it really cool. It's like a secret. It is secret. Everybody loves a secret. And then you can move to that plan if you wanted to here too. All right. Let's go through the next stuff. Let me put that up. Producer. Where's my producer? <laughs> All right, here. Uh, dealing with refund cuts. Yeah, I think we yeah. Oh yeah, refunds. So I'll tell you my strategy for refunds because it didn't come through very often these days but they do come through so someone's unhappy right they want a refund for whatever reason and most people don't understand that i can't give them a refund only apple can yeah so i've actually just got a template now it's got a quick email template that explains listen if you want a refund no problem here are the steps you have to you have to go through you have to you know, go to apple.com do this do that in order to you know, apply for a refund and you what 99 percent of the time that's it it's done but sometimes someone will come back and say apple refused to give me a, ref uh, a refund and at that point here's what i do 
I'm actually sending the money to PayPal. Okay? Because to my mind, just sending that refund directly is so much better than then leave like a one star review that they were scammed, right. you know, which could really ruin things. So I do that, but also I also give them a promo code for a one year subscription for free that they can then give to a friend. Mm. And I've I've been tracking this. A lot of people actually do do that. You know, they, they themselves have unsubscribed and got a refund. Yeah. But then they, they, they think so highly of both the customer service and the app, they will actually give a promo code to their friend who is now a customer. Mm. You know, so for me, I find that the best recipe for dealing with refunds. I love it. All right, let's get into, we've got a lot of questions. I will get to your questions <laughs> below because John's like, He's going to spend all day with us. All right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mary says, thanks for sharing all this. John is a great looking paywall. So professional. I did have a question here. If I could find it that said, John, what tools are you using? John, you are an absolute legend. Thanks for sharing your wisdom. Hey, thank you. John, are you just on iOS? You know, I've got an Android app as well, but it's not, you know, it's not quite in the same league as the iOS app. So it's not, it's, it's, it's just ad supported. Mm -hmm. I find that subscriptions don't really work as well on Android as they do on iOS. So I think at some point I'll try and, I'll try and beef it up a little bit, maybe try and get a paywall in there. But right now it's actually making a, you know, a decent amount of revenue just, just to Google Ads. So I'm quite happy with that. Love it. And what tools did you use to create this nice video and animations? Okay, so I okay. use Rotato. That's a R-O-T-A-T-O. So basically you record your iPhone screen or your simulator make it makes a movie out of it and then you you place it in rotato and then it basically gives you like a 3d model of an iphone or an ipad or an apple watch That's and then you can just like either create a still image you can use for your screenshots or you can start like moving it around rotating it making it look extra cool it's is, uh, is this, really yeah. simple to use definitely recommend okay. it that video took me like two hours at most rotato.app you see this, John? Do you see my screen yeah. at all? Yeah, I see it. Okay, cool. That is that is it. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. All right, John, let's get into the most important part of the show. We're going to get into the app audits, but the most yep. important part is the dad jokes. <laughs> Shall we play for a drink, John? What's your drink of choice? Oh, a nice beer. <laughs> I'll be having one after less, I can tell you that. What's that? I'll be having one after this. I can tell you that. <laughs> I love it. All right. <laughs> you want to start or you want to go? You want yeah, to go first? I've, got, I've got a nice Scottish joke for you, Steve. Okay? okay. Perfect. So why do people always take an extra pair of socks when golfing? Why? Because they don't want a hole in one. <laughs> How's that a Scottish joke? <laughs> you have to tell me that hey, part. Scotland is, a, is, a, is the home of golf. Oh, okay. I, I did not know that. That's why. All right. Well, John, I'm recovering here. What? How does an Englishman invite a dinosaur for lunch? Don't know. T Rex. There you go. All right. Put T or put T. Put J if you thought John's joke was funnier, and then put S if you thought my joke was funnier. And then we will put we are playing for a drink of John's choice and my choice, depending on who wins. All right. I know you guys are waiting for this. So here wants help with app growth. So we'll try to go quickly through this stuff. His app is called Heart Sync. It's a heart rate mm -hmm. monitor, heart health, and pulse tracker. Anything that you see, John, from the App Store presence or ASO? You know, right away. I love the screenshots. I think they're really well presented. One thing, and again, going back here is that, you know, the headlines are just a bit too small. You know, mm. you might want to beef them up a bit, make them bolder, make them bigger. And I find a space yeah. in the health space. One thing I find I see a lot of is the use of photography, right? Mm. Like for, if you imagine uh, you know, someone jogging in a park, someone lifting weights in the gym. These are the kind of people who'd be using this kind of app. And so by including like photography, maybe in the background, mm -hmm. you're making people kind of see them see themselves in that situation using your app. 
I love that. I love that. Cool. All right. I'm going to get into the app itself because it said app revenue growth. So because we're short on time, I'm just going to go straight into it. All right. Allow. John. Mm -hmm. uh, nice. Sorry. The first screen, I was like, you know, I didn't know whether to stripe, I, swipe or not. I think the, you know, and this is the difference between your onboarding, in my opinion, I saw too, was one, the interaction with the, uh, here, I'll just show it like this. One, the interaction with the, the engagement with the user. But I mm -hmm. also thought like big, the big continue, you know, like the kiss, you know, keep it simple, silly. Yeah. Like it just says continue. And then, you know, a lot of apps like this one now, we're starting to see it, it's like some people just won't know right depending on who mm. your audience is yeah, you won't know can't make it too screen. subtle you know it's yeah, don't uh, make, don't be too subtle about it the, yeah. the ct needs to be as big and bold as possible otherwise people just they'll just get confused agreed 43 i see there we've got the big red button at the bottom that's that that is perfect you know that is perfect i don't i'm not in kg sorry <laughs> i don't know what kg uh, I can try to figure out pounds to kg here. Let me try it real quick. 2.2 .2 pounds to kilogram. 2.2. .2. So I just have to divide by two kind of in a way. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Okay. So I'll, I'll put 66 then. All right. Oh, shoot. Okay. Give me that map again. <laughs> Uh, this is the problem when you said it you're like hey for all you new yorkers this is <laughs> we do it the right way and then now I'm in the u.s and we do it backwards but like i don't know how many centimeters i am so i'll just pick 172 which i don't even know what that yeah, means that's, 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 that's about, yeah that's about right all right because yeah, cool. well, 180 is six feet if i remember correctly all right i'm definitely not six all right mm, that's nice people yeah you like this would you like would you do a video for cross like most apps or what are, what are your thoughts on the video on the paywall is it like you think it's universal like do it or is it just like it's depending an experiment on the you know yeah. you've got to you got to a b taste the stuff it's really it's vitally important you don't just go by gut instinct you let the, the data do the talking i like it i like it i think again it's that you know i see these apps and they always include lots of photography mm-hmm especially in the paywall, you want to kind of get the user in the, in the frame of mind that they are the ones in the photograph, that they are using your app to uh, achieve their goals. And it's not a long paywall, is it? So you could actually you know, increase the size of the headline and have a big photo or even a montage yeah. at the top. Kind of I like what you did up here too. Goals. And you know, I'm a dude. I told you I was a dude. So maybe even put a dude, I don't know, maybe just females perform better, but like, you know, you knew that I was a dude. So maybe put a dude up there too. I really like that. And I think the same applies for this, the screenshots here. It's like, put the Apple watch. If you have Apple yeah. watch integration. That's um, it. You get it in there and it, or even experiment, have one with and have one without do some AB testing and see which one works. Yeah. There's a little crown. I like it. Yeah, other than that, everything else looks really, really decent. It's a really well designed app. I, yeah, I really it is. like it. I do too. Oh, got an ad. Which I don't mind, but I wonder if it's the wrong time. So I'll here, I'll measure my heart rate. I don't do it like this. John, you're making me nervous. Is it, is it oh, like monitoring your finger? Yeah, I'm putting my finger wow. on the camera. I've seen other apps. Do this. That's impressive. Yeah. I really like the the haptic. What? Is this my blood pressure? Or is it's my, your heart rate, I think. Is this my yeah. heart rate? Well, John, you're making me nervous. My heart rate is usually <laughs> pretty low. Okay. That's normal. It's usually a lot underneath, but all right. I'll take it. Nice. Okay. Ask for the review. And there Great. It is. There's, there's, a, there's a rating prompt. Yep. Probably the most important part of the of the experience is to get a rating because that will always affect your ASO, affect your downloads, affect your how you rank in the in the for various keywords. I don't know this for sure, but I'm I, I, my my theory is is that um, Apple kind of tracks the the kind of journey from mm. you know, impression to download to rating acceptance. You know, I think so. so too. Uh, they see like uh, someone has. 
given a five star to an app for when that was searched for uh, for a specific keyword, then I, I reckon you that app will rank higher for that keyword because of those ratings. But I can't be I kinda, sure. I can't be sure too, but I I have an inkling of that, and I'm going to be testing that. Literally, I'm going to be testing it with my app today. But like the the other thing I would say too is suit here like. What we found is unlock pro features mm -hmm. tends to work, convert the best. One of our clients, we did unlock everything, higher click through rate, John, but yeah. unlock pro features, less click through rate, but higher actually paying customers. So I yeah. think instead of just saying unlock, you know, we want to see the pro features here too, but I really like this. Yeah. And then play around with the pricing. Like if it's not converting well for you, just like John increased it worked, maybe decrease might work better, but mm -hmm. like. The only thing that I'm missing here, let's see if the second open has it, John. But I think some having some form of discount. Oh, the ATT oh, yeah. just showed on the first onboarding screen. Yeah, I would do yeah. I would discount earlier, sit here, because look, you can look at your numbers, but you can see how many first opens versus second opens you get. And I'll bet you you're gonna lose a good amount of I would say over 50% of the people will probably lose. I might be wrong if enough people are opening the second time. Definitely keep it here. But if there's not, then show it during the first open. Let me just see if there's, I want to make sure there's no trial. I think he can go higher than this 29. He went from 50 mm -hmm. to For health, yeah. Well, absolutely. Health and fitness, yeah. you can, you can, you know, there's a lot of price elasticity in yeah. that sector. And here, you, I mean, this is so beautiful, but you could put easily put it, that discount right here or make this into a discount. Yeah. Because, yeah, people buy before, during that first time user. A nice gift box. Really, really nice, yeah. Where's the gift box? What are you saying? No, I'm saying if you oh. have a graphic of a gift box, you know, yep. free gift for you, you know, it's yeah. uh, could convert really well. John, Jess Mal says, are you using Swift for your iOS apps or cross platform? Oh, yeah, it's all Swift and mostly, mostly UI kit this day, but every new screen or updated screen gets moved to Swift UI as, a, as I'm doing it. Yeah. So, yeah. How many millions of downloads? Five million, over five million, yeah. right? Yeah, there you go. John, you won. Dang it. St. Andrews. <laughs> I got one vote. Romaine, thank you. But all right, let's go into round two, my friend. Okay. Who's going first? I'll let you go first, Steve. Okay. You go for it. Thank you, PJ. He says, I love your New York accent. Thank you, <laughs> PJ. New Yorker. <laughs> all right. I had some good ones. I thought, I thought that that one would win. All right. All right. I'll go with this one. John, don't throw sodium chloride at people because that's assault. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> nice little science joke. I like it. <laughs> All right, Steve. So why yep. do trees have so many friends? Why? They like to branch out. Ooh. <laughs> I like there it. You go. There you go. Nature joke. All right. Same rules. S for me. J for John. And then let's go through some of the questions really quick while people are here. Hey, I'm, I appreciate people showing up live. So mm -hmm. I want to make sure I get to a lot of your questions. Let's go there. Rapid fire. Okay, John, let's do this. Do, 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 do. Uh, would you find finance? Like I said, would you be able to look through our app? Love your work. Yeah. Just go to appmasters.com slash audit at masters.com slash audit. There's a bit of a wait, but you can sort of get ahead of that if you want to. Uh, and somebody says, Masood, hey, Masood, some of those five keywords are also good with ROI. Yeah. Okay. So Masood was talking about like the five traffic score keywords. Mm -hmm. I, I'm doing this with yeah. one of my clients. I was like, let's just go all in on these five keywords because nothing else was happening, John. <laughs> and so I was like, and we've been working you together something for a long time. Out of it. Maybe only a few per day per keyword, but yeah. they all add up. They all yeah. kind of grow together. Yeah. And I'm just like, all right, I didn't believe anybody, but I was like, forget it. <laughs> I'm going to do it. <laughs> I do want to address this because I get a lot of these comments. Maruf says your channel deserves way more views for the incredible content you consistently deliver. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Maruf. Another comment said, you know, why don't you have more views? Look, if I, this is my premise and I just want to, I will never talk about this anymore. But if I stopped, if I judge my work on the number of views or subscribers or anything else off of this, then I would stop. And I've seen it with other people because there's this mismatch in expectations and actuality, you end up stopping because you get discouraged. 
frankly, I, I did develop that. I, you know, I did, I do live streams with only 10 people showing up and I was like, fuck, do I, what is this? What's going on? And I would really feel bad about myself. Instead, I transitioned my thought process to be like, well, 10 freaking people showed up for it. That's amazing. And you know, we have people that are routinely here day in and week in week out. Mm. And so I don't let that bother me because I would stop otherwise, but, and I wouldn't get to meet people like John and Rudy and Mary and Masood. That's how I gauge a success of a channel or a YouTube video, because yeah. you, you can get lost in the weeds. And, you know, I'm always happy when somebody makes that first $100, first $1,000, first five, 10, whatever that number is, because I don't want you to get discouraged. I'm always going to be your cheerleader. And so that's my, I'll, I'll get off my soapbox, but that's, <laughs> I'm tired of these comments, but I appreciate them because they're just like you, you know, the, they're more like the quality of content's there, but the views aren't, but I'm like, I don't care about that. All right. I'll get into just smile. Just smile. I love that. Hello. I want to become an iOS developer, but really afraid of the current job market. What is your take on that, John? No. Oh, okay. So it's a tough one because for, especially for juniors, it's a really tough market. And essentially you have to go through like maybe three, four months of just grinding leak code to kind of make, it, you know, make sure you get past the technical interview. But I'd say it's, it's definitely worth it. Okay, it's like a, you put the work in, it's a great career to be in. I've done some contracting in the past. And you know what? As an iOS developer, you always get great jobs. Okay. There's an upturn or downturn in the market, especially when you get to intermediate and senior level, there will always be a big career waiting for you if you're up for it. I love it. Do it, man. You won't regret it. You'll regret yeah. more of the things you don't do in life than the things you end up doing. John, what's your quick win in regards to marketing? Tewu. Okay, so I'm probably not the best list because I don't I don't do enough marketing. You, when you had Charlie Chapman on the show a few, a, few, yeah, a, yeah. a month ago, yeah. he is a guru of this stuff. You know, he he plans out and executes everything with so much precision. It's it's amazing to watch. Um, I was I've been guilty in the past of kind of being on this kind of feature treadmill where I would create a brand new feature, really proud of it, really excited, and it goes nowhere because I didn't do any work in mm. marketing that update. I didn't write uh, press releases. I didn't send in any information to blogs or journalists. In fact, most people in the app didn't even know it happened because I would just update the, the watch news section on the app store, which no one looks at. So what I'm doing now in 2024, I'm reducing my build output to maybe four big releases per year, but I'm going to spend a lot of time both before and after the release of the update doing marketing you know they've getting and using you know dark noise and flighty as examples of what 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 to do you know but i will say this there are so many great people on twitter and mastodon who have they, can, they build in public but they also show what their marketing plans and what they do and who they speak to and the, the, uh, what they do four weeks from release two weeks release and even better two weeks after release so kind of look around find those kind of indie makers and you know, follow them and get inspiration from them because that's what i do i love it i love it and then melon king says i think having a continue with instead of apple sign in with apple on the first mm -hmm. onboarding would be better yeah we do yeah i share this in the i'm past, actually thinking but... of actually moving that whole screen the first screen just move that to after onboarding now yeah, I, I love it. I'm actually, making it part of the the home screen when you first when you first get into that proper. I like it. And let people to do it in their own time. Yep, I love it, and I love that you allow people to skip. But I love the email marketing capabilities there too. Oh yeah. And then apps for parents. Are you working all of this on your own, or do you have a team of dev? Or do you have a team, John? No, just, just well, my wife is my kind of rock in this regard. She supports me. You know, for, she's been there for like the last ten years. When I've been working nights, working weekends, you know, so she, she's my team. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's great. Same with my wifey. Shout out to you, babe. All right, Joe says, brilliant idea for something wrong button. That's that 3D touch that you touched upon mm -hmm. too that I'll highlight here. So the Nurek says, uh, Steve. No, so it's a quick win, isn't it? It's like a, you can do it within an hour 
yeah. and it's there, whatever. It just works. Yeah, I love it. And then Nurik says, Steve, what do you think about the friend tracker app? Good perspective on keywords? Mm, maybe Nurix, mm. but you know, I don't know. It's a bit generic, isn't it? Friend tracker. Yeah. It's like uh I always find it's it's best to try and look for something more niche. Yeah. Because I think like like something like Life 360 has probably kind of covered that, that that keyword combination. But you might find if you I mean is it for your kids, is it for you know, is it, is it for your car keys? It's like a you want to try and can find keyword combinations that you can slip into without the big boys noticing. Masood says, did the reduction deletion have any effect on download and ranking? Uh, no, not really. No, it's okay. like, I don't think Apple, I mean, the deletion rate wasn't too bad anyway, so I don't think Apple really tracks that too much and ties it within with your organic impressions. At least Rudy, that's, not, that's not what I've seen. Rudy says, I added a 50% option, the 3D touch items helped convert a few users that would have uninstalled. So kind of like your secret offer, Rudy, yeah. I shared this in the past too. Rudy has a, a little bit of a 50% offer when you really touch that too. That's what Rudy is talking about there. So those who are listening. All right. <laughs> Eric says, I was a bit surprised how many actually found the cheap plan. We did have one when someone unsubscribed too, but it was used by many other subs after one year mark. Yeah, that's it. I mean, if someone kind of subs sub for a year, they like that, they're going to continue, but then they, they have a quick look and see that, I don't mind. Yeah. Because, like, again, I'd rather have them go in the $5 a year plan than the $0 a year plan, right? I love it. I love it. Okay. I know Seven's here. He's been waiting for me. All right. And then I love, I appreciate all the comments of Romaine. I forgot you, Romaine. Love you. Steve, your channel really helped me. Thanks for keeping up the good work. So, thank you, guys. I appreciate that. And then Henrik says, this is just for my ego, all right? <laughs> John, <laughs> never, never stop, man. Your channel is definitely the best in the topic. My dream is to become an indie successful, successful indie dev, and tell your tell my story in your show. Yeah, if you're a successful indie dev, I'm always looking for you guys because I know that topic. I love that topic too, and so please reach out to me. Don't be, don't be shy because I get a lot of PR people wanting these other guests that are like VC funded. I love talking to people like John and you know Henrik. When uh, you in the near future, all right. Let me tally up the jokes. Just see if there's a round two. Steve, Steve. Aha, John, I got it. We're tied. <laughs> yes. We'll get into that, but there let's take go, a Steve. look at well done. Seven's app first. Seven mm -hmm. wants all, everything. So from an ASO perspective, onboarding user experience, he's got an app that allows you to exchange app bikes. It's a bike exchange app if you want to, you know, list your bike mm -hmm. yeah. to for sale. And then, yeah. Go, John. Okay, should I go first, Steve? Back. Please, you're the guest, my friend. Okay, well, first of all, I love the the first panel, right? I love apps that kind of have a big headline as a kind of the starting point. And what we'll say is you can make it bigger. You can, in fact, look at something like Uber, right? They, they, have a, they have a huge headline on their panels to kind of bring you into the experience. And I think you, you can make that headline for the entire frame and really catch people's uh, attention. Go and look at that huge, huge meaty headline right there, you know? Yeah. I love it. And we have actually seen that, like lead, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like what you put on, John, like leading with the main keyword. I know you're A-B testing it, so I'm getting the, yeah. the B or the A, but like having this big and bold and the main keywords should be the same thing because that's what people are searching for. And so when they see yeah. it big and bold, they're more likely to click on your app. Anyways, love that feedback. Okay. Anything Next else? up, I think yeah. there's a quick, a quick win here. Yeah. Now, on your fourth panel, you've got photographs, part of your, your showing listings, right? Yeah. People love photos, especially for something, something like this where they're not sure if it's the right app if it, if for them, but seeing the kind of evidence that this is for buying and selling bikes, why not move that from the fourth panel to the second panel? Yeah. So actually everybody sees it, because right now it will be hidden during when you're searching in the app store i love it i love it yeah because I, I did think the same thing i was like are we really looking to make cash pay maybe john right like, but <laughs> if i'm a cyclist and i'm really passionate about it i don't know if like cash is the first thing on my mind it's more like maybe community maybe mm -hmm. connecting with other pe cyclists getting rid of some parts and buying some hidden parts that are super hard to find, you know, like maybe mm -hmm. that's more important to me. And yeah. then like John said, we, or somebody else said this too, that was listening to this podcast, like 
read through your reviews, see what people are saying about you. Oh, what yeah. are they loving? Big leagues, they, they got five star reviews. People yeah. are saying nice things. Grab that text, get it in there. Yep. Great way to find your next bike. There you, there you go. go. That's, that's your headline. Yeah. Right. That's, that's frame one. That's it. That's all yeah, you great need. Great for selling inventory. There you go. See, they, they said selling inventory, buy. Great way to mm -hmm. buy your next app. Perfect. That, that just like John said, get your bicycle parts here, your next, uh, you know, all that stuff and sell. Wanted. Because I would think like wanted and get are more important than mm -hmm. make cash and subscribe. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if Seven has some comments. What a rock star. That's for you, John. All right. Thanks so much. <laughs> that's, that's all right. That's anything else on the Thanks, ASO Seven. front? <laughs> um, you know, I like the keyword combinations you've got as well. Yeah. I can see there's a lot of joining going on where you can combine a lot of different words for both your title and subtitle. So, for example, you've got a uh, bike exchange. You've also got, well, you've obviously got, you know, you've got buy, sell. You, you can join these words together. And really, you, I, th I think you'll be ranking really well for a lot of these keywords just by being able to join them so naturally. Because so many people will be seeing, searching for, buy bike buy bicycle bicycle exchange bike exchange and you can you can grab those keywords yeah i love it and uh, hopefully seven doesn't remind my means sharing this but the he and i have been working together on this and the reason why we did bike exchange was i was trying to get him to rank better on the google end because when we look for bike exchange it's not super high traffic but obviously it's very targeted like a five search but there's a lot of google searches because there's a brand called bike exchange so i was hoping that by changing the names we would start showing up on the the google results too and so that's sort of the thinking there and i said don't sleep on it because if i'm on mobile if i'm mm -hmm. on phone and searching for bike exchange which you know a lot of there's a lot of mobile searches going on not just desktop mm -hmm. i will hopefully show your app in here too and so that's now, Don't sleep I, on I've Google. I've got an idea, Seven, right? It just kind of came to me here that I don't don't know much about bicycles, but I know there's a lot of different brands. Is it possible to maybe get like brand names as keywords mm -hmm. as well? Would people search for a particular brand name of bike and then have your app come up? Like, for example, if you've got your kind of generic terms for your US app store listing, can you maybe use uh, brand names for your Mexican app store listing and kind of get, get people that way? Yeah, I love it, especially for the ones that are like for the hardcore cyclists. Oh, yeah. I'm I know sure one of your ASO like premium brands that cost thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah. Someone said, go ahead. You're, uh, he said, you're absolutely right, John. Didn't think of a customer photos. And then he said, go ahead and share it. So thank you for that. And then it is going up. So that's good for him. All right. Anything else, John, before we get into the app itself? I think that's about it for me. Yeah. Yeah. Same with me. Let's take a look. I was trying to look for it here. All right. How did you find us? Josh. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Who's Josh? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I like it. I want to buy, actually. Go ahead, John. You can talk over me if you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the onboarding so far. Like the people again. I'm going to go back to this old trope of photography, right? Where you're showing you you, you want people to aspire, right? You want to inspire people. You want to people to see themselves in in that kind of that frame. So, what you know, have you tried maybe including photography of of cyclists, of you know, two guys working on a bike together, that kind of thing. Would that try and experiment? Would that increase conversion rates? So people could, it kind of humanizes the app, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I love it. And I, I Seven, I wouldn't do this because my eye completely goes to this. Play around with the pricing. Look, I think it's kind of expensive. In my eye, it's kind of expensive right now, but I could be wrong because, you know, cyclists are there. Don't mm -hmm. put subscribe, put start for free or something else. John, I have this, I'll just share this. I have this idea where, a lot of apps show the annual as a cheaper option. Yeah, and I've seen that as well. Most apps do this, but I want to A/B test this where we show and we we did launch this with our app 
where we show the monthly and the weekly and whatever offers you got as an annual. Because if we all mm -hmm. agree we want people on the annual, then I'm showing, I'm actually increasing the price of the monthly to make it as an annual price so that it anchors off of the annual yeah. price versus the monthly. Now, I have no data if this is correct or not, but that's just something that I'm testing right now. But definitely change this and don't move this around. And I like what John said about putting something up here for some imagery up there. Uh, okay. And Seven says, I'm pretty sure Strava has photos since paywall too. Because look, if, if you're moving this seven, my eye immediately goes to that. And I know it's close to the subscribe now button, mm -hmm. but it, it does distract me a little bit from everything else. One thing I noticed, and this is quite interesting, is I noticed you've got like login with Strava. I didn't actually know, I've not, Strava, I've not used Strava for years, but yeah. I didn't know that was a thing. That's, that's really cool. I'm I just hate wondering, this too. It, can you share content to Strava? Like, yeah. would it be possible, for, for example, to share a listing? Not great. just the, the usual the usual way through share sheets, but I should be able to share it to, to your Strava community. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's possible, if they allow that kind of thing or not, but it's something to look into. Yeah. I, I hate this. I hate this, Seven. I hate that you're asking me to sign in when I'm telling you I want to subscribe. So I would change that around. And personally, John, I don't like this these I, mm. logos. Again, you're assuming we know this. And we're all techie, so we know what every icon is. But keep it simple. Show, yeah. continue with Strava, continue with Google, continue with Apple, continue with Microsoft, continue with Yahoo. I yeah. get the icons, but I don't. And plus, you, you have so much empty space that it just, if I don't, I mean, some, I don't like this. At look all. at your numbers. How many people actually use the last two, like Yahoo? I mean, surely <laughs> most people probably use Apple, Google, and then Strava, you know? Past guests have told me about 90% of iOS users use sign in with Apple. So yeah. there you go. That should be and fun center. The calm, I, I always use the calm example because people are like, you know, I need, this is my developer voice. All right, John. I need to make sure that I get people to sign in before they buy. And I'm like, well, you know, comms pretty dang big. And here's what they do. They get you to activate a trial first, right? You can even sign up. You can skip this, continue with, and you can skip that. And then they show you the paywall. And then once I subscribe and activate a trial, guess what I have to do? Create an account. Like that's it there. I can't, I'm stuck here on the screen. So you don't necessarily need to do it this way. Seven, because I already said yes. So now I'm going to, you're going to get me to say yes. And then you're like, ah, forget it. I'm going to say no again. All right. A lot of notifications are like that. Get a free sale of your, see again, I don't even know what to do here. What do you want me to do? Yeah. Get a free sale via referral. It's confusing. Do you know what this means, Sean? Uh, so, I guess if you start the app and then, hmm, okay, good. It, 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 it John, like I don't need any more. We don't, yeah. we don't, I'll be mean. Okay. John's too nice. Seven. And we don't have, we have no idea what this means. He had to think about it. If I, we have to both think about it, guess what? We don't care about you that I, it's yeah. easier to be mean like this. Sorry, seven, <laughs> but <laughs> instead of doing one-on-one -on -one calls, but I have no idea what this really means. John doesn't either. If we have to think, guess what we're going to do hit later. All right, and then confirm. These are the filters, and then we're done. Don't allow, because I don't want people knowing my address on a live stream. <laughs> and so, all right, I like this. Everything else looks pretty good. Yeah, I mean, having user-generated user content is always great, especially for screenshots. You can have so many different, different variations. And yeah, I mean, the design is, looks fantastic. You know, Everything it's else a really, really polished good. app. This. Thanks, be me. This is helpful. <laughs> All right, good. Thank you, Seven. <laughs> yeah, I like everything else too. And I think you know, I don't, I don't remember him asking like, are you? He said buy or sell. But Seven, like, I just hit buy a bike, but allow me to like select multiple options versus just one option and moving along because then you have data. Like, are people what you know? You have data, and then you can use that data to then inform your marketing and then what you want to show on here too. So, yeah, I would like that. A little bit everything else looks really good congrats man but i like what john said about all the big bike brands because even if they don't have a lot of search volume it will work i mean if someone's paying like what eight nine thousand dollars for, for a bicycle then they're gonna be the right kind of customer you want you know yeah yeah i like it 
All right. Let's see. Any? Hey, John. Twitter recommendations. Maybe in the chats and comment. I need to do my do my research, but yeah, there's a who's a is it Manuel who does a card pointers. He is he's definitely one to follow because he, especially during kind of iOS beta season in the summer, he's out there right away. To, to coding with the betas, coming up, up against bugs, and then giving you lots of so many different examples of you know, using new features, and then how he markets his new uh, features to the public. He's definitely one to watch. Is it self so Emmanuel? Car- Who am I looking for? Uh, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, I can't remember his last name, unfortunately. He invented card pointers. Emmanuel card pointers? Yep. We haven't spelling um, his name wrong. I'll put it in the chat. All right. I'll find it. All right. We'll put it into the, the chat or the comments below. All right, John, you got one more joke in you. Oh, yeah, you absolutely. Goodbye. All right. <laughs> okay, so this is a classic. You ready? <laughs> yes. So why don't skeletons fight each other? Why? They don't have the guts. <laughs> I like it. Uh, I'm trying to figure out when. See, I, I thought the, I thought certain ones would win, but they don't. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Okay. I have too many. <laughs> I just take a bunch of screenshots and then sometimes I'm like, I forget which ones I've said. Uh, okay. All right, I like this. Shout out to you, honey. I love you. But sometimes I wake up grumpy. But John, other times I let her sleep in. There you go. <laughs> That's for my wife out there. All right. John, anything I missed that you want to make sure we cover? Uh, I think we've well, we've covered a lot today. We've covered yeah, a lot. So, uh, no, it's just a, I think the main takeaway here is, you know, don't be afraid to ask for money. Try and slip into the cracks and the seams of the app store and find the places that the big competition doesn't care about. And that is my key to, to success. I love it. No better way to end than that. Go check out John's app. If you want to see all the cool stuff that he's doing, go to travelwiz.app. That is linked up in your favorite podcast, YouTube video description as well. Please leave comments below about who won. We need the tiebreaker right now. So we just need a few votes just to, to figure out <laughs> the most important thing of this. And then John's app is called Momingo. So if you guys are in the, wherever you are in the world and you want the most accurate, bus and train times we'll go check out momingo as well all right next week we're gonna have one more episode before the christmas break the holiday break we're gonna talk to a somebody who's in the audience he's building he's an inner city teacher and he's building an anti-bullying app and he wants my feedback and i was like yo if you want my feedback would you mind letting me record this and doing a YouTube live stream about it. He's like, let's do it, Steve. And so we're going to do a live coaching call and we're going to do more of an AMA type of thing. But Paul is going to be on there on the yeah. stream. And then if you are an indie developer, please, please, please reach out to me. Steve at appmasters.com or .co is good. All right, John. That sounds amazing. I'll be there. You owe me a beer, my friend. <laughs> you owe me a pint. All right. Amazing guests. Good stuff, John and Steve. Uh, and then, Lil, thanks for the today's episode. It was amazing. Thanks, John, for all the secrets. Thank you, John, for oversharing, my friend. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys. Well, that's it. Have a great weekend. I will see you guys every Friday, except for the holiday break, but every Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific. Have a great great weekend. And, John, thank you so much for coming on and sharing all this great content. It's been an absolute pleasure, Steve. It's been a blast. All right. All right, guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.